towards the end of the previous video, we created our new album entity. And in doing so, the API platform has automatically created the five typical RESTful routes. This allows us to get an individual album, get a collection of albums, post in a new album, put to update an existing album and delete an existing album. And we also saw that our BHAT tests for post are currently failing. And this is to be expected because we're using the root of album singular in our test, but the generated roots use albums plural. Now, I guess we could change the tests and that's really open to your interpretation around singular versus plural, but I don't want to change the tests. And besides, it's a pretty good excuse to explore some more functionality of the API platform. Now, in order to define a custom route or five custom routes in our case, we need to understand the concept of an operation. Now we touched on operations already in the health check video. You find a link to that in the show notes. But operations are tasks that we can perform on a given resource. Or in simpler terms, they're the way that we create, read, update, and delete our entities. Now there is more to operations than this, but this covers our use case. And it's really important to understand that there are two types of operation. There's collection operations and there's item operations. Post and get act on collections and get, put and delete act on items. It's a bit odd that get appears twice, but if we think back to our Symfony 4 JSON API or the Symfony 4 FOS REST bundle API implementation, we have already seen this. In both cases, we had a get action and a see get action. In other words, get one and get multiple. Now, in order to define operations, we can use either XML, YAML or annotations. I'm going to go with annotations. The reason for this is the same reason that I use annotations for other things. It's because we can keep everything together in one file. In this case, our album.php file. There's no need for a separate file, but you do have the option available to you if you wish. To begin with, I'm going to move the annotation down one. This is purely for formatting for the purposes of this video. This has no impact on your code. Now, to the very best of my knowledge, it's not possible to define a resource level prefix for our operation or in human speak, we cannot generically say all routes for an album resource start with album singular. Instead, we have to manually define each operation. Now, any operation that we explicitly define are not actually merged automatically with the implicitly defined operations. So you've got to be quite careful here. And this problem is easier to see in action than it is to explain in words. Essentially, what I'm talking about is because we've now explicitly defined our post collection operation, the automatically or implicitly defined get collection operation will no longer exist. This is nice because it allows us to be very explicit about what routes we do want available, but it could lead to circumstances where you accidentally lose a route if you're not aware of this. Now jumping back to the output of a debug router, there's one thing to highlight before we rerun that command, and that's that the words collection and item do appear as suffixes on the respective route. So notice that we have both the get collection and post collection routes defined. And then once we rerun the debug router, we'll see that we only have the explicitly defined post collection route. So again, the API platform won't automatically merge any of our custom operations with the automatically or implicitly defined operations. That said, we have only made changes to our collection operations key. You will notice that these have been happily merged with the automatically generated item operations. So just because we've manually defined some collection operations, it doesn't mean that we lose those implicitly or automatically generated item operations. Now it's also important to note that both of the get routes are mandatory. In other words, we must be able to get an individual resource and a collection of resources for any resource that we expose via our API. And as such at this stage, if we were to send in our test, we should expect to see some sort of error. Now a 406 isn't quite the error code I was expecting here. I would have expected either a 500 or a 400. So the reason that I say a 500 is when I was doing the write up for this tutorial, I was seeing a 500 error in this circumstance. But when I came to record the tutorial on a slightly later version of the API platform, this same problem now results in a 400 error. Regardless of the error code, I would approach this problem from the same angle. I'm going to try and look at the logs. So if you're used to Symfony projects, the first thing that you're probably trying to do is look in the dev.log file. As I'm on my local machine at this point, that log file doesn't exist. So if you've any experience with Docker, you might be thinking, well, that's not that big of a deal. What I'll do is I'll jump onto the container and I'll see if the log file has just been written to the container. However, if we do that, we'll still find that the log file doesn't exist. So in order for us to be able to see the log files, we're going to first need to install Monolog, which we can do using Composer Require, just like normal. 
and Symphony Flex is going to take care of setting this up for us with the normal defaults. And as soon as the installation process is finished, we can rerun our test. So again, from the local machine, I'm going to rerun the BHAT test. We should still expect the same outcome, the 406, but the important thing is all of the process behind the scenes should have been written to the log file. So we can see from the log file that the issue appears to be that we're not sending in a content type. The content type of an empty string is not supported. Helpfully, it does tell us that the supported MIME types are JSON-LD, JSON and HTML. The root cause of this problem is because I've somehow removed the line and the content type request header is application JSON from the BHAT feature. I'm really not too sure why I've done that or how that's happened, as I'm sure we had that in there for all our previous tests, but even so, the log files reveal what the problem is and resolving it is not that big of an issue. And for complete clarity, all this does is ensure that the next request made by Guzzle will have a header with a key and value pair as specified in that line in our BHAT feature, which in this case will be content hyphen type and application slash JSON. Okay, so with that little detour sorted, if we now send in our test again, we should get back the expected 400 error code, which again, our log files will actually help us in tracking down the root cause if we weren't already aware of it. So as we can see, we've got the no collection root associated with the type of app entity album. And we know at this point that's because we haven't explicitly added the get method to our collection operations annotation entry. Okay, so let's add that mandatory collection get root back in. All we need to do is define get as the key with the method of get and the path being album and then some format. It's basically almost identical to the post key and after doing so, we should be able to see new output when we run a debug router. So with the correct route in place, you would be forgiven at this point for thinking that if we send in our test again, we would get back the expected 201. But unfortunately, in this case, we will actually hit on a new error. This time we're going to get a 500 error. And this comes down to two problems. The first is that our release date should not be null. And you may be thinking, well, the release date shouldn't be null because we're definitely sending in something that looks like a date time string. And that is the case. That highlights the second problem, and that's that the API platform at the moment is expecting us to be sending in release date in camel case, but we're sending it in release underscore date in snake case. So we're going to get onto both of these issues in the very next video.